Hello and welcome dear viewers to the present video on comparative dissolution profile and in this video we will see the time points only for CDP. Also the present video will cover the time point consideration for showing the or demonstrating the similarity in the dissolution profile for immediate release type of formulations. So let's start with the video. See there are two types of dissolution testing is done. There are two types of time points. First is a release testing or you can say it as QC testing. In this the dissolution is performed at Q point. Dissolution is not performed at multiple time points or profiling is not done for the QC release. While for making the comparative dissolution profile the multiple dissolution time points are considered. CDP is done in the R&D phase for demonstrating the bioweaver requirements and for demonstrating the comparative dissolution profile similarity. The CDP is required in the R&D phase in the scale up phase and also for the post approval phase. Generally 12 unit data is required in multiple medias that is also called as multimedia dissolution. See here in a multimedia dissolution or CDP the dissolution profile shape is considered and comparison is done with minimum three points. So whenever you are performing the CDP you should perform the dissolution at minimum three points. But Generally the best practice is to perform the dissolution at several time points like 5 minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute and 60 minute. Also in some of the organizations or in some of the formulations recovery is also tested. So always have the multiple dissolution profile in your hand. Then what are the time points requirement? or generalized guidelines for the time points for making the CDP. Like you calculate the similarity factor or dissimilarity factor like F1, F2. For that minimum three, to three points are required. Now see for the Brazil and Mexico generally five time point data is required. And in this comparison or for showing the dissolution similarity zero time point is not considered. It is excluded from the CDP study. Then space the time points to complete the dissolution profile like 10, 20, 30 minutes. So your time points should be such that you have space for the complete dissolution. If you are achieving complete dissolution at 45 minutes and you are running the dissolution test at only 30 minutes or till only 30 minutes, so that is not the requirement. The complete space should be there for the time points. Complete spacing should be there for CDP to have the understanding about the dissolution profile shape. Then adequate sampling should be there till 90% drug is released or dissolved. Only one time point should be considered after 85% drug is released or after 85% drug is dissolved. So the basic reason behind this is that if you consider more than one time point after 85% release, then there are chances that you are matching the dissolution. Because after 85% release, the dissolution will become similar. So you will not have the good understanding and idea about the dissolution matching or dissolution mapping or you can say it as dissolution profile shape. So only one time point should be considered after 85% is released because generally more than 85% release is considered as a complete release. If more than 85% uh, release is uh, within 30 minutes uh, within uh, 15 minutes then CDP will not be required. But here you should consider and understand that this 85% release should 85% uh, release within 15 minutes should be there for innovator also or reference formulation also. Otherwise you have to perform the 
compared to dissolution. So, whatever the dissolution comparison you are performing, always keep an eye on the dissolution of innovator or reference formulation. Otherwise, you will not have the good idea and understanding about the CDP. Also, regulatory bodies will not accept that CDP. Then, time points. So, as for the Japan requirement, the regulatory body of Japan has given a clear information about the time points. And they have given a time point requirement based on the 85% drug release. So, very good understanding is given by this guideline based on the time required for 85% release or 85% dissolution. If dissolution is equal to or more than 85% in 15 minutes to 30 minutes, then three time points are required. So, it is very clear. If percent dissolution is equal to or more than 85% at 120 minutes, that is 2 hours in 1.2 pH media and 360 minutes, that is 6 hours in other media, then 4 time points will be required. Now, if the dissolution is 50% to 85% between 30 minutes and 120 minutes in pH 1.2 and 30 minutes to 360 minutes in other media, then 8 time points will be required. So, see, it is very beautifully given here based on the 85% release, the time point requirement will be there. If percent dissolution is less than 50% between 30 and 120 minutes in pH 1.2 and 30 to 360 minutes in other media, then 8 time points will be required. So, this is the requirement for Japan and it is very clearly given to have the complete understanding about the dissolution profile, dissolution behavior of the formulation. Then last time point and early time points. So many of the professionals get confused between these two terms. What are the early time points? What are the last time points? So early time points are nothing but the 5 minute and 10 minutes time point for IR formulations and these are selected or excluded based on to the release profile. If release profile is rapid or very rapid, based on that, the 5 minute and 10, 10 minute time point can be uh, considered or excluded. Then variation in the dissolution should be clearly understood. If you are getting more variation at 5 minutes in innovator and uh, test product and because of that uh, variation, you observe that your dissolution is not meeting. So you can exclude that time point. Because generally the 5 minute time point depend on the uh, tablet film coating or hardness little bit or uh, opening of the capsule shell. So you can exclude, exclude that time point. But always uh, have good understanding about the behavior of the product at 10 minute time point. Then last time point. See last time point is the time point at which you got the 85% release. Also, whenever you are performing CDP, that time you keep the Q point in your consideration. Sampling should happen at Q point. It is very clearly given in the guidelines and it is very, very simple understanding that you should have the data of Q point. For example, in QC media, your Q point is 45 minutes. So, 45 minutes should be there as a sampling point whenever you are performing the CDP. So, if your Q point is 85, your Q point is 45 minutes for 85% release. So, only one can be considered after that point. That means 60 minutes. So, either of the test or reference formulation is giving you the 85% or more release. So, then you should consider only one time point. And it is either of the test or reference. If test formulation is slower and it is not giving the 85% release, but the reference formulation is giving, then reference formulation should be considered. And this is the as per Europe, Australia and Russia. 
and reference formulation as per Mexico and Japan. Then for test and reference, not more than one value above 85% as per US and Brazil. So if you are working on a global product or the product which is going to be globally filed like US, Europe, uh, uh, Japan, Mexico, Brazil. So all these in per all these uh, requirements should be understood and based on that you can do the CDP and you should select the time point for F2 calculation. So whenever you are doing the CDP and calculating the F2, the best practice is to follow uh, the guidelines which are there regarding the time points. You should try to follow all the guidelines. That is the best practice. So here if I, uh, if I am not wrong, if the product is global, then uh, here uh, consider the test and reference both, either of the test or the reference formulation. Whichever formulation is showing you the 85% release, consider that time point and consider only one time after that time point. Like if you are getting 85% release at 45 minutes, then consider only one time point that is 60 minute time point. So this is regarding the time points. Then what about 5 minute and 10 minute time point? So sampling should be done every 15 minutes for IR formulation. But the best practice is to perform the sampling at 5 minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute and 60 minute. And also do the recovery. Very rapid dissolution. We can say when above 85% release is at or within 15 minutes and rapid release or rapid dissolution above 85% release at or within 30 minutes. So as I told you earlier that very rapid dissolution will not require the CDP. F2 comparison will not be there. If your formulation is showing very rapid dissolution of above 85% release at or within 15 minutes, then only the dissolution data is required to be submitted. F2 requirement or F2 calculation is not required. Then if you are not meeting the criteria of very rapid dissolution, then F2 will be required. And rapid dissolution above 85% release at or within 30 minutes will require the CDP. And F2 uh, calculation to demonstrate the dissolution similarity. Slower release can be said if the release is uh, 85% release is not achieved at or within 30 minutes. This can happen for some formulations like low soluble uh, API formulation as IR formulation uh, that is uh, BCS class 2 API or BCS class 4 APIs. So based on that the time point can be selected. So now whether to include or exclude the early time point to show the similarity whether you can include uh, 5 minute or 10 minute and uh, like 20 minute or 15 minutes or you should include or exclude the time points. See sometime if you exclude some time points you will match the dissolution or sometime if you include some time points you will match the dissolution. So it is not like that you are using some time points and excluding some time points just to show the dissolution similarity. It is never be like that. You should perform all the dissolution with similar conditions and then you should compare the profiles. Follow the general guideline rules to show the dissolution similarity. For IR formulation which are rapid in dissolution that means you are getting the 85% release in 30 minutes. So that time your time points will be 15 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute and 60 minutes. Or you can select like 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute, 60 minutes. So first you, are, you should understand the product behavior and based on that the time point should be selected. It is not like that. Uh, some time points are included just to improve the F2 similarity value or to uh, some time points to uh, just to excluding the time points to have the similarity value. 
generally 5 minute and 10 minutes are the early time points for slowly dissolving formulations consider the 15 minutes 30 minute 45 minute and 60 minutes as the time points for dissolution comparison so this is regarding the comparative dissolution time points comparative dissolution is required to be done in different media like 0.1 uh, normal SCL, pH 4.5 acetate buffer, pH 6.8 phosphate buffer and your QC release media. If it is not the media uh, which is in the physiological pH range of 0.1, 4.5 and 6.8. If uh, for example water is the QC release media then your CDP will be performed in 4 medias. If 0.1 normal SCL is itself a QC release media then CDP is required to be done in 3 medias. So I hope uh, you might have got understanding about the time points for comparative resolution profile and showing the resolution similarity by F2. Uh, I will make the other videos in which we will see the resolution comparison for modified release formulations. This video is only for IR release formulations. So thank you for watching the video and I uh, request you to Please do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.